and reading up about you know what I should do when I get there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I was reading about Markov chains and the process of investigating you know just the basics of like Q learning and transfer learning in the context of you know artificial intelligence agents and some of the underlying mathematics uh, before I flunked out of graduate school for applied math. I do remember taking a class and studying Markov chains in detail, and I thought it'd be interesting to code up an example. And we're going to sort of code up an example um, along the lines of the gambler's ruin problem. One thing about a Markov chain is that you kind of, uh, it, it's kind of like a system or a bunch of outcomes that jump to different states, like a state could be an outcome. Uh, just like a state of water. It could be frozen, it could be wet, you know, it could be falling from the sky. You know, there are different prop, you know, different things can be in different states. Um, if you're gambling, you could have different amounts of money. The weather is kind of a state. Is it raining? Is it cloudy? Uh, you know, anything kind of changes. A lot of life can be modeled this way, at least in theory. But the thing about a Markov chain is that the odds of changing to any other state moving forward are independent of the uh, of the current and the prior state. And I thought one good example here is that say you have five nickels and uh, ten dimes, if you just randomly choose coins, will your next coin choice satisfy uh, the property of, of being a Markov chain or satisfy the Markov property? And, and, and no, because after you get down to a certain amount of dimes or nickels, you'll know that inevitably it's going to be a nickel. So we're going to code up a little bit of a thing called the gambler's ruin. Not exactly. I think we're going to look at the in the context of like uh, if we have a finite amount of wealth and we're playing a fair game against somebody who has infinite wealth, how long will it take for us to go broke? And this is kind of like what they're calling a random walk on the real number line or something like that. But basically, we're just going to write some Python. So I'm running Python 6 here. And we're basically going to solve a problem in the context, um, you know, let's say we have 10 bucks and each coin toss, um, we bet $1 on heads. How many games or tosses until we go broke? Or will we go broke? Or maybe we'll analyze the distribution of that. So. Definitely need random, and again, I'm Python 3.6 here. So how are we going to model this? Well, we know we need a couple of things, right? We need uh, we need uh, the money, and we need the count of games. So I'm going to set that equal to 10 and 0. And I think we're going to write a loop that says while money um, uh, toss equals random random. And random random is going to return a value between 0 and 1, right? So I'm going to say if toss is less than 0.50. So we're betting that it's going to be over. So this is our losing condition. And we're betting a dollar each turn, right? So our money is going to go down by 1. If the toss is over 0.5, then our money will go up by 1. Either way, the count is going to go up because we're always going to count. And um, I think what we're going to have to do now here is just see what happens. So now what's the count? 116. And what's the money? Zero. And while money, obviously, uh, while zero, you know, like if you evaluate zero, that's false, right? So uh, the while loop terminates when this reaches a, a Boolean valuation to the false. So what if we wanted to get a better sense of this distribution of outcomes? For instance, let's run that again. The count just went up by a factor of 10. So why don't we turn this into a function and just call it uh, define integer walk. And you know, look, if you're a mathematician and I'm using this term inaccurately, you know, it's all good. I'm not a mathematician. 
And what do we want to return? We want to return, um, yeah, return the count. We always know the money is going to be at zero at some point. So now let's say we wanted to do this simulation. I'm going to import NumPy too, just for some analysis of outcomes here. So let's run the simulation a hundred times. So we're going to say sims is equal to integer walk for x in range 100. So basically that function is going to run 100 times and, and the values are going to accumulate into a list called sims. So if we look at the length of sims, that's going to be 100. Now if we look at sims, these are how many times it took us each time to go broke. And now look, I, I really can't comment on how non-deterministic Python's random, random function is, but I have to assume it's pretty good. I mean, it's a mature language used for scientific prop, uh, processing. Maybe NumPy random has one too. NumPy random. NumPy random dot maybe random. That would be that would seem probable. All right, so we could also use that. Well, put that in our back pocket for now, right? Let's just keep looking at this. So, the interesting thing is here that you know this hopefully non-deterministic random function. If you have a finite amount of money and you're betting against somebody who has you know perhaps even more money. Sometimes, you know, you run out of money pretty quick, but sometimes, man, 482,000 coin flips before you, you run out of money. So that's actually pretty wild, um, 162,000. So, you know, if you wanted to summarize this in terms of mean, median, it really wouldn't tell you a lot to look at, look at either. I guess, I guess the median might tell you that, uh, you know, let's actually look at it, right? So NP median sims 204 right the mean obviously is going to be stratospheric compared to the mean um numpy deciles let's look at the deciles i feel like i've stack overflowed this a number of times here that worked out pretty well for me oh i got a star that's nice um yeah so np percentile the var here is sims all right, so that's interesting. So this is using the uh, the Python standard log 3.6 random random, and let's run it. You know, let's run it like 500 times. See how long that takes. It could take a while. Well, that's taking a while. Do, 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 do. What we're going to do in just a moment, though, is we're going to come back up and simulate it using the NumPy random function. And we'll see what the distribution of that looks like. What is it doing to my computer right now? It's running on a single thread. Okay, so it ran 500 times. So it looks like the 10 percentile is 14, 36, 90th percentile is 6,900. Um, yeah, I still, I don't know. It seems like the mean 20, 270,000, my God. Yeah, so how the hell could that be? This doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Yeah, whatever. I'm just curious about the, the underlying distribution really anyway, if you look at it. So let's run this again now by using uh, NumPy random random. Let's run it a hundred times. 
And let me just keep that up, random numpy mean on our original sims. And I'll put sims numpy is equal to that. Maybe it'll even run quicker. Wow, numpy is random appears to have run a lot quicker, which makes sense because it's, uh, it's numpy. So let's take a look at np.mean sims. 270, 186 was our original. So 2430, 588. That's pretty interesting. I wonder why the mean, may, maybe it's that this function is, is less deterministic than the Python random function. It's actually, uh, it's actually hard to say. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll do a quick um, list zip of the sims and sims.npy. And if we take uh, the um, absolute value of x minus y, x, y, n. So if we take a look at the absolute difference between the values outputted by the original simulated value and the NumPy simulated value, you know, quite, quite large. And you do see that the, uh, the mean is, is in two orders of magnitude larger. So my guess would be that the NumPy random function is uh, better behaved. And you're seeing these highly squirrely outcomes using the Python random function uh, just because it's not a special scientific library. It's probably good enough just for randomizing or shuffling your data or even more, but maybe for some kind of classic mathematical problem like this, it's not as precise. So I don't know. I thought that was a fun little problem to think about. You could code this easily to take a, uh, a random type and then delegate the, the functionality here with an if statement. Um, but you know, hopefully that was kind of interesting looking at a, a Markov chain and yeah, cool man, see ya.